welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to turn a Raspberry Pi into a NAS or a network attached storage device by installing and configuring OpenMedia Vault 6. I'm making this video because my last Raspberry Pi NAS guide was based on OpenMedia Vault 5 and that reaches end of life on the 30th of June 2022. And so it's now time for an update. Right, in this project we're going to be using this 2GB Raspberry Pi 4, although any Raspberry Pi 4 or Raspberry Pi 3 is fine. This said a Pi 4 will deliver much better performance as it's got faster Ethernet and USB 3 ports. For our NAS we also need a system drive and at least one storage drive and here OpenMedia Vault will be installed on this 32GB Samsung Pro Endurance microSD card, although any microSD card of 8GB or more in capacity would be fine. Our storage drive will then be this SanDisk on 20GB SSD which will be connecting to the Pi using this SATA to USB 3 adapter. This said you can use any SSD or hard drive that you can connect to the Pi via USB and in fact the storage could even be a USB thumb drive. Do note however that if you use a 3.5 inch drive it'll need its own power supply. Talking of which we're going to be using the official Raspberry Pi 4 adapter and we're also going to need an Ethernet lead to connect the Pi to the network. Finally, I'm going to use this. This is a little bit of plastic card I cut out this morning. I've added various uh, standoffs and screws as you can see. And this will hold everything together like this. Although there are lots of other potential case and mounting solutions available for a NAS as I've illustrated in many previous Explaining Computers videos. So, here we are on the website for Open Media Vault, otherwise known as OMV, and to install OMV on a Raspberry Pi, rather than downloading an image from here, what we need to do is to install the latest version of Raspberry Pi OS Lite, and then to run a script written by Aaron Murray that will download and install OMV. This is all very comprehensively documented on this page here, that I'll link in the video description. These really are excellent instructions, and they always access the Pi over the network. However, as you can probably see, if you use these instructions, there's a lot of stages involved. And therefore, what I'm about to demonstrate is an install process that involves fewer steps, but which does at one point require a monitor and a keyboard to be connected to the Pi. The end result will be exactly the same regardless of which method you use, neither is more correct than the other, but providing you can connect a monitor and a keyboard to the Pi when required, I'm pretty certain that the method I'm about to show you is more straightforward for beginners. So, we need to start out by visiting the software section of the raspberrypi.com website, where we can download a little application called Raspberry Pi Imager, which as you can see is available for Windows, Mac and also for Linux. And here in Windows I've already installed this program, we go to the desktop there it is, we'll just uh, run it up. And we now need to choose our operating system from the link over there. And what we need to select is Raspberry Pi OS Other. And then here I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 32-bit. And do be aware that OMV installation only works if you first install Raspberry Pi OS without a desktop. Also note that here I'm selecting the 32-bit image and if you're using an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4, you might want to use the 64-bit version instead. Anyway, here I'll stick with 32-bit. We now need to choose our storage media, which is the microSD card we saw earlier, and which I plugged into this computer via a USB adapter. So if I click on Choose Storage, we can pick it up, and then all we need to do is now click on Write. And then after that it checks, because these things always do. Yes, we want to continue. And here we are a few minutes later, we now have Raspberry Pi OS Lite on our micro SD card. So we'll remove it from the computer and go across to the Raspberry Pi, where by the magic of filmmaking, I've inserted the micro SD card as well as plugging in the power adapter, Ethernet lead, monitor, and keyboard. So I'll just turn on 
power and the Raspberry Pi will perform a first boot and indeed a second boot after that. Next, we need to choose our keyboard layout. It's got English UK for me, that's fine. I will tab down to OK and enter. And we now need to enter a username and password because in the latest editions of Raspberry Pi OS, it no longer has a default of Pi and Raspberry. So I'm going to use the username EC like that, tab down to OK and enter. And I'll put in a password and we'll have to confirm it. And do, of course, remember that password because you might need it to access the Pi. Next, what I'm going to do is something to make the font on the screen a bit bigger so it records better on video. So you absolutely don't have to do this stage, but if you do want a larger console font, enter sudo dpkg reconfigure console setup like this. And then on the next screen, select UTF-8, followed by guess optimal character set. And then for the largest font, select Terminus and 16 by 32. And there we are, we've now got a larger console font and I'm also going to enter a clear just to keep the screen nice and tidy. So we're now back to the things you absolutely do have to do. The first of which is to update the Raspberry Pi. So enter sudo apt and update like that. And next we need to do the sudo apt and a upgrade minus y like that. And note that the minus y flag there automatically answers yes to any questions that come up during the upgrade process. And here we are, the upgrade process is complete. So we can now do a sudo and a reboot. Finally, we're all set to install Open Media Vault. And exactly how we do so depends on what kind of Raspberry Pi we have, because if you have a Raspberry Pi 3 only, you need to now execute this command here, which I'm not going to enter because here I'm on a Raspberry Pi 4. Finally, we need to execute Aaron Murray's OMV install script for the Raspberry Pi, which we could do entering this command here, which you'll find on the web page I showed you earlier. However, most of this command is the URL for the script itself, and so I've used tinyurl to make this a bit shorter, and so this is the command we actually now need to enter. So to take you through it, we start with a W get like that, and a space and a hyphen and a capital O, that is not a zero, it's a capital O, and then a space, another hyphen and a space, and then our URL, which is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash tinyurl.com forward slash three small m small u six small v two small e's and an m, and then followed by a space, a vertical bar, which you'll probably find on the key next to the Z with a shift, and then another space, a sudo, a space, and a bash like that. And if we have it correct, if I now press enter, and lo and behold, by the magic of computing, Aaron Murray's script is installing OMV on the Raspberry Pi. The process will, however, take some considerable time. So the key thing to do here is to have patience, let the process complete, and as you may know from other videos, my recommendation is you now go to the park and talk to some ducks. So here we now are back in the land of computing where the setup process has completed and the Pi has rebooted and is now running Open Media Vault with its IP address displayed on the screen. We could now immediately type this into a web browser and proceed to configure Open Media Vault. However, for me at least, it's now time to disconnect the keyboard and the monitor from the Pi, and I also want to relocate it off my workbench. So, for now, I'm going to close things down using the command sudo shutdown and now. Greetings! I've now relocated and rebooted the Pi running headlessly. So if we go to a web browser on another computer and we enter the Pi's IP address, which was previously displayed on its monitor as 192.168.1.115, this should enable us to access the OMV interface. And uh, here we are, it looks very nice indeed. Note that the Pi's IP address is a local address allocated by the router on the local area network. 
and may change on reboot unless you assign the Pi a fixed IP address in your router's control panel. Alternatively, you can always use your router's control panel to find out which IP address is currently allocated to the Pi. Or you can use a free utility like Angry IP Scanner to scan your local network with the Pi's address most likely to be found in the range 192.168.0.0 to 192.168.1.255, which is the range I've scanned here. Anyway, returning to the OMV web interface, let's press F11 to give us a bit more screen estate, and we'll now log in using admin as the username, and the default password for that is Open Media Vault, if I can get it right. Looks like I have, and no, I don't want to save it. Thank you very much, there we are. And as you can see, as this is a first boot, it's telling us that the dashboard hasn't been configured. So we'll click on the settings page to do something about that. And there's lots of widgets we can display on the dashboard. For now, I'm just going to pick system information. I think that's fine for now, and I'll press save. And uh, there we are, we have a dashboard with system information. As you can see, we've also got navigation over here, which gives us access to lots and lots and lots and lots of functionality. Open Media Vault really is fantastic network software. There's all sorts of things we can do here. If I can scroll down to it anyway, as you can see, lots and lots of things are available. And it's also worth noting up at the top right, we have a little gear here for settings. And if we click on that, one of the critical things here is so we can use this to change the password. And of course, I'd encourage you to change your admin password to something other than Open Media Vault if anybody else is using your network. It's also worth noting that here we have a shutdown button, so you can do a controlled shutdown of OMV. Anyway, what I now thought I'd do as a simple example is to set up the SSD connected to the Pi and to create a simple share to allow it to be accessed by other computers on the network. So if we first go to storage like that, and we go down to disks, we can see the disks or the drives on the system. This is our micro SD card. This is our SSD. And like everything here in Open Media Vault, we give it a click, it'll turn orange, and we can do things to it. So here, for example, we could edit various properties of that drive. And if we select it again like that, we could also wipe the drive, although here the drive is already wiped. It's in factory state with no file system on it. So what I'm next gonna do is to go to file systems over there like that, where you'll see there's no file systems currently displayed. And we'll click on a little blue plus arrow like that and click on create. And we'll now select our device, which will be the SanDisk SSD like that. And we'll leave the file system at the default, which is a X4, as you can see, and we'll click on save. And then when it's completed, we'll click on close. Next, we need to mount the file system, and very helpfully, OMV6 has taken us straight to the mount menu, as you can see. So here we need to select the file system again. There it is. And we can now click on Save to have it mounted. And do we really want to do it? Yes, we do. We'll let things happen like that. There it is. Although for changes to take effect, we have to apply them using the little dialog at the top here. We click on the little uh, tick and uh, confirm that as well, and yes. And we'll see these confirmations many times in Open Media Vault. In theory, if you want to, you can get on with things and just apply everything in one go at the end. But personally, I like to apply changes as we go. Next, if we wanted to, we could go across to the menu here and scroll down and go down to Users, and we could create one or more users with different access rights. But to keep things simple here, I'm going to go back to Storage, where we find shared folders like that, and we're going to create a shared folder, and we'll give it a name, which I think is going to be Pi4 and Share. That seems to be a reasonable name. And we need to select a file system. It's, of course, the one we've just created. And we'll set the access permissions to everyone can read and write. And once again, we'll save and then apply the changes. Next, to allow other computers to access our shared folder, we're going to go down to Services over here, and then we're going to select SMB CIFS, which stands for Server Message Block Protocol, Common Internet File System, and it's a common means of sharing files on a Windows network. So if we select that, we'll go to Settings, like that, and we'll enable the service at the top, scroll down to the bottom, and save, and once again, Apply Changes. 
And then finally, we'll go back a level to SMB CIFS there and go to shares. And we're going to create a share. You probably guessed that. And here we need to first select a shared folder. It's going to be the one we just created. And then we'll go down here to select its permissions, which is going to be guests only, which will allow anyone on the network to use this folder. Finally, guess what? We're going to go down and press save. And after that, guess what? Apply changes. And by Jingo, we've now set up a shared folder on our SSD, accessible by any computer on the network. Now, having set up OMV, let's see if it actually works. And so here we are on a Windows 10 PC on the same local area network, where initially I'm going to go to settings, and we'll go into network and internet, and we will scroll down here to go to network and sharing center, and then we'll go to change advanced sharing settings, and we'll see if network discovery is turned on. It isn't, so we'll turn on network discovery and save changes. And there we are, we should be able to discover a network. So we'll now go to this PC and we'll go up to computer like that and we will map a network drive. And Windows has already selected, we're going to map to drive Z, but we could change that if we wish, but we'll stay with drive Z. And we'll now browse the network like that and across our fingers. And there we are, Raspberry Pi's come up. We will select that, select our Pi 4 share and OK. And if we just uh, finish off down there, there we are. Here is our Pi 4 share. This is our shared folder on the network. And just to prove it's working over here, I've got a folder with some files in it. Let's just copy those files across. We'll do a copy of those over there like that, and we'll paste them across into our shared folder. That seems to work no problems at all. So there we are. We've successfully set up and accessed Open Media Vault 6 on a Raspberry Pi. Setting up Open Media Vault on a Raspberry Pi can provide a useful means of sharing files on a home network, and it's also a great way to learn about network storage administration. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.